with me, Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Jesus speaking in Matthew. You know, if you realize, Moses saw the burning bush. He chose to turn aside and thankfully did because it's what he heard, not what he saw that gave him purpose and direction. If you're running by your feelings, you will fail. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He chose that by the foolishness of preaching. You, mean, you gotta hear this, I know. Oh, it's just a Wednesday night. Oh Lord, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you if you hear this message, or any other Wednesday night message, whether it's me, Brother Christian, Brother Joe, or any of the other guys that preach around here, it'll be enough to get you to heaven if you obey it. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and, thank you, Some, can anybody else say doeth? Doeth them. I, this is Jesus speaking, will liken him unto a wise man. You know, it's a good thing when Jesus calls you wise. <laughs> See, your friends want you to be fun. Yeah. But Jesus wants you to be wise. Which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and it beat upon that house, and it fell not. Those people that are built right survive the storms. Doesn't mean they don't have storms, but they survive them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. For it was founded upon the rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. Everybody heard. The difference is what? The doing. Thank you, Brother Carl. Shall be likened unto a foolish man. To know and to not do. Jesus, you're a fool. Which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew. And it beat upon that house and it fell. And he ends that with, and great was the fall of it. You can place your Bibles down. Let's go before the Lord. Prayer is important. Why don't you just right now put everything aside. Put everything else. I, I put the to-do list down. Thought, Don't worry about someone's wearing across the way. And pray right now. Jesus, help me. Help me be a, a true builder. A smart and a wise builder tonight. Help me, Lord, as we move forward in the word of God. And we thank you for the word that doesn't give us a clue. It gives us the way unto salvation. Thank you, Lord, for making it clear, making it plain that we could truly be saved. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Amen. Jesus was just beginning his earthly ministry. And first, we know that he selected 12 disciples who would be close to him for the next three and a half years. He found the brothers, Andrew and Peter, James and John. He called Philip, Bartholomew, and even Judas, and all the rest. When he accomplished that, he set about to do his work, and in short order, he, he gained quite a following. Matthew describes it this way, and Jesus went about in Galilee in Matthew 4, 23 through 25, and teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease yes. among the people. And we, let's all say amen. He still heals. Yes. Mm -hmm. He heals sickness. Sick. He heals disease. Yes. You know what disease is? It's dis-ease. God wants to bring ease back into your life. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. And those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic. And those that had the palsy. And he healed them. Everybody say healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. There was a lot of intrigue, interest about this Jesus who did miracles. Yes. Huh. We have to take note of the demonstration of the power of God yes. and realize what drew the crowds. 
Can I tell you, it's no different today. They weren't drawn by fancy buildings. They weren't drawn by, listen to me now, a friendly reception. This group that followed Jesus, if you think about it, weren't exactly seeker sensitive or friendly as they say it today. More than once, Jesus is chosen, his, his boys pleaded with Lord, send these jokers away. How many like uh, uh, how many likes the awesome friendly atmosphere in here? Anybody could walk in here and feel like oh, I'm thankful for that. But they didn't do that back then. They didn't have that. It was not in place. Jesus wasn't running around like Pastor Coe saying, greet everybody. Love on, pray for people, hug on them. Let's love one another. He didn't do that to these guys. He, he taught it. But these guys like, send them away, Jesus. Now, why am I saying this? Because the followers came. Because of the power of God they found. That's why it's so important that this church be a place of great spiritual power. You want, you see, people, people try to understand pastor and, 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 and spiritual people. It's frustrating to watch people that can be powerful be prayerless. It's frustrating to know that people have been given the Holy Ghost and, and it's dormant or stagnant or non-existent. You have, to, you have to understand a spiritual, powerful church won't come easy. That's why some of you are on the outside looking in and you see it and you feel it. But God wants you to be involved in it. And it's not just going to happen by an accident. You're going to have to be like Mary and choose to get at the feet of Jesus. You're going to have to choose. Because if you will pray. If you will truly come in here to lift up your hands and worship God and concentrate so that the power of God is in operation here, the multitudes will come. I'll tell you right now, we can't keep them out. We don't have to be user friendly. They're going to want to be here because the power of God is here. It's, it's, it's like a tug of war. Anybody ever done a tug of war before? Can you imagine being in a tug of war and you look behind you and I'm on your team and I'm just standing there watching you? Can you imagine you're tugging and, and, and the, the balance of the whole game, the whole effort is your soul and I'm just standing there going, man, you need to pull harder. You'd be like, get your hands and start pulling. What are you doing? And you look at your neighbor and say, you know what? Get in the game here. Get in the game here. Get in what's going on here. Because I, I, can I tell you right now, I'm not one of those super sensitive, hyper worried about someone getting a little bit more airplay or spotlight than me. I can give a rip about that. I want the power of God. I don't care who God uses I know there's some people in my, well, if I'm not going to get that, I don't want to. No. We, we, I, I'm not that insecure. Now, we got a lot of people that act like they're bad, but they're as insecure as a, as a baby. Let's, let's, Bible doesn't want us to be babies, it's, it's to grow up. Maybe it's time to grow up and go, you know, I'm going to get a prayer life because I, I won't be bad. I want to be spiritual. When I, when I walk into the church, I want to contribute yeah. instead of suck it dry. Yeah. See, it's not about your position. It's about your prayer life. It's about the power that you really have. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that tug of war, we, we, we got to be pulling this church into spiritual awareness. We got to be involved in, hey, I'm pulling, pastor. I'm pulling, I'm pulling down strongholds. I, I'm pulling down things that wants to exalt itself against it. All. I'm, I'm laying aside some things when it comes to giving. Hey, we're going to live modestly to give radically. Why? We want to be powerful. We set aside time and we're faithful to church. Why? I want to be powerful. I'm not just praying at church, but I'm praying at home. Why? I want to be powerful. I'm not setting aside. I know it's just a weight. It's not a sin, but I don't want to do it because I want to be powerful. 
Jesus looks at that. He, he, he watches our lives and finds out how all in with the church are we? At our level or seeking his level? Let me get into that. We can't afford one saint. Now, visitors, I'm not talking about visitors, I'm talking about saints to be spiritually stagnant. I pray that God wakes you up in the middle of the night. I pray he steals sleep from you. Not to hurt you, not to harm you, but to save you. Because yes. if you're not spiritual, I doubt, it's doubtful you're going to be saved. Because the Bible says, be spiritually minded and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, the lust of the flesh is death. So if you're not spiritual, you are, you're carnal. Does that make sense? It's like, you ever seen those rowing teams? And, you, it's, it's, and if you understand the mechanisms, the effort, and the strength, it's absolutely beautiful to watch that thing just cut through the water. And it's like those oars are connected, but they're not. It's team. It's pulling in one direction. It's for one purpose. And there's something that happens in the spirit and in a church where we all start pulling together. Also, Wait a minute. Hold on. Jesus has called me. He's called me. I don't want to be the weakest link. I don't want to be the biggest grain in the top. Ah, God, let me pull. Let me do my part. I want to be a part of a powerful church. I want to be a part of the power of God. So people come in here with cancers and diseases and sicknesses, and you lay hands on them, and the sick recover. Some of them are battling addictions and sicknesses and alcoholism. And maybe he's beating his wife or she's unfaithful to her husband, and God can deliver you. I'm telling you, it can still happen in the church. Oh, God, what are you doing preaching a Sunday message on a Wednesday? Listen, let, 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 me, let, me, let, let me get down. I want to preach to church people. I want to preach to some of us that get stagnant. I want to preach to some of us that think just showing up gives me authority. People that just, well, I got my chair. And y'all know y'all better not sit there. You took my spot. No, sit down. I sat there till you showed up. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I like you right there. I'm not insecure. Come on, Pastor. Then I sat there. And then you moved me. And then y'all come over here. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm over there. Why? Hey, man, if we all put together. Oh, man, if we all get in this thing. If we realize, oh, many hands make life work. They didn't come to relieve me. They came to help me. They come to get on fire because we all need one another. La, 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 la. Hold on. What you do around here church building and services does not mean that you have no responsibility when you're not here. I get it. Preachers and singers and accounting and cleaning and mowing and fixing and painting and sweeping and vacuuming and purchasing and stocking and baptizing. and They're all necessary. They have their place. But none of it absolves any one of us of the responsibility to be invested in our community or to witness or to teach Bible studies. We all must be involved in reaching the lost. If we have a heart for our very Savior, we must each be Christ-centered that I don't care if I'm at the grocery store. I don't care if I'm at the auto parts store. I don't care where I'm at. I want to be a light that shines in the darkness. We got a world that's going nuts. We're about to go to World War III and some of you are more concerned about your likes on Facebook. The devil don't care if you go to church, but he cares if you become the church. Don't let this be another message that you've heard about this subject. Why don't you turn around and tell yourself, hey, you know what? I won't be unpowerful. I won't be on fire. I want to be in this thing. I don't want to go out like, like, like a spark. I want to be a raging fire. 
Acts 1 and 8 is not put in there for no reason. I believe every word is on purpose. But you shall receive power. But it's subject to your choices. It's not that God didn't call you. It's that you didn't leave the door open to it. But you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. Each one of us has a personal responsibility to our God. To our God to fulfill the assignment he has given each and every one of us. Are you fulfilling your assignment or did you not show up? Our personal outreach is the manifestation of our true love and thankfulness to God. See, he said, many people draw an eye through their mouths, but their hearts far from What are you saying? They're hearing, but they're not doing. Remember the two builders? There's really no greater way to worship or honor God than to fill your life with telling others about him. Go read Acts 22. Paul gave a tremendous testimony. We ought to be given our testimony. We have to be a net casting church. Put down the fishing pole. Pick up a net. No matter how tired or weary we seem to be, we are given uh, scriptures to help us. But brethren, be not weary in well-doing. The problem is, 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 is we, we're not worrying well-doing. We ain't got time for well-doing. I got other things to do. John 21 and 6, and he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They'd been fishing all night. They'd been doing everything they knew. They'd been doing their thing. But one word from Jesus. You realize what they did? They didn't just hear him. You know, what did they do? They obeyed him. They, they did it. See, some of you are saying, well, if he t- he's told you, yeah. you just haven't done it. He's told you you need a prayer life. Pray without sissy. He's told you you need to fast. He's told you you need to. Re- it's not veiled. Anybody ever done an escape room? They're fun. If you haven't done one, you're missing out. But if you're not good at it, don't do one with me. I like to take smart people with me. Brother Carl, you're coming with me. You know what escape room does to you? It teases you with answers. You got to try to figure your way out, Brother Lawrence. You almost got to guess. Let me tell you something. We're given the answers on how to get out of this mess. You and I are without excuse. If you're not powerful, you missed it. If you're not on fire for God, you missed it. If you're not doing your assignment, you missed it because he's laid it out. And they cast their net, therefore, and so much that they weren't able to draw it. How many wants a blessing you can't contain? How many wants a ministry and a walk with God that just affects everybody around you? Some of you have been living from one fish to one fish. You're weary because, and you're tired and you're malnourished spiritually because you're catching one fish a month. You're doing one thing right a week. Can I be real? Come on, you parents, you get the first thing you say when your kid comes home, act like a fool. What have you been hanging around? You walk in the church, you're not powerful. God's like, well, look what you've been hanging around. Look what you filled your life with. Stop blaming it. Look, you want fire here? It starts with fire there. Yes. I'm going to do my part. Do your part. Some of us, oh, come on, Sister Erica. Put on a song here, get us all moved. I like that song. I don't like that song. I tell you what, if you liked prayer, you'd love every song. Oh, if you had some fasting and some Bible, if you were all in for a, you'd be running to amazing grace. You'd be jumping to the old rugged talk. You are so on fire and so thankful that your Savior called you and he's redeemed you and he set you on fire. Hallelujah. Reaching your world is your purpose. Not owning it. All right. Let me say it this way. 
And I thank those of you with, that are actively involved in teaching Bible studies and doing outreach and getting involved and being all in. And so because we're going to do everything we can and use every effort to get people here, then can I say above all else, we should all want them to encounter the power of God when they get here. Okay, okay. forgive me. This is going to sting. The reason some of you don't care is because you're not catching any fish. You're not putting any effort out during the week. So you can come in here. And, and I'll be honest, I don't care if any of you ever come up to me, except my wife, She's not. she has to do this. And tell me I preached a good sermon or that I did okay. I don't need that from any of you. I got a wife for that. I got a wife to critique me and tell me I'm doing I got a daughter that assists in that as well, just a little bit. And then, of course, my worst critic is me, and I don't even like to hear myself. I won't listen to myself. I can't. Oh, makes my skin crawl. Who is like that? Anyway, you have to understand something. You have to understand something. We create our own spiritual sickness. The reason you're okay just sitting through a service and you don't care till you're doing something is because you're really not involved in the master's plan. Yeah. You'll go fishing when it suits you. And then you're trying, well, when I, hey, I got someone coming. Why would you have to tell me that? You should always have someone coming because you're always fishing. You're always casting the net. There should always be so because you're powerful. You're on. Do you realize that you think God would stop, would, would not bring people by you if you were on fire? He put an Ethiopian eunuch in, in Philip's path. Wait a minute. Did I just enter the wrong church? Is this is this an apostolic? Is this an ap- is this Souls Harbor? Oh, okay. I, I just wanted to check. I thought maybe I, I, I'd turn a corner to you some came in the wrong place. We should trust. All right, let's put it on me. Do you guys trust me to come in here ready to preach? I'll be honest with you. There was a few years there. There was a few years that in my flesh I got so weary. Watch. I had more resistance from the church. I said, put it to, I, I never fought demons. I was fighting human spirits. Yeah. Because you can't agree with me, you can't get on board with me. You have to, you know, God, God gives you no qualifications for that. There's absolutely no qual- qualifying verse. It didn't matter whether they like go out of Egypt or not. If they're going to get out, they needed to follow Moses. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hey, parent. It don't matter if your kids like your rules. It's your house. You're going to do it my way. It don't matter if you like it or not. I know you want to run around with this and run around with that. No. Now, when you get all grow up and I don't have to support you, I don't pay nothing for you, go ahead with your bad self. Go ahead. But don't come up here and tell me how I'm going to rule my house. Don't you tell me how we're going to do it here. Uh huh. You ain't going to play the fool here. And I'm going to, ah, you do that on your dime. And I'm sorry if you don't like the fact that I'm responsible to your 18. Go to your government. Okay, what am I saying? Get back to this. We need a church full of Holy Ghost filled on fire saints, not just a pastor, not just a ministry team, not just a praise team. My God, I'm telling you, when people walk in here, there ought to be fires throughout this entire church in chairs here, in chairs there. The pastor's wife ought to be on fire. The pastor's friends ought to be on fire. Those people sold out to God. Sister Crystal ought to come in here on fire. Lacey, you ought to be in here on fire. Sister Brown, you ought to be on fire. We ought to get on fire. You're more worried about a title than be on fire. The devil's already got you. Because honestly, and I gotta hurry up. Come on. It's all right. Come on. Preach it. Just preach it. Come on. Nothing says you don't care about the lost like missing prayer or neglecting prayer. I, 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 I see it. Come walking in here at 10 minutes to church time starting. 
All right. I, I, I get it. It's, it's a volunteer deal. When it comes to me. But when it comes to standing before God. True, true, true. Come on. Come on. <laughs> okay. And he, Jesus, cometh and findeth them sleeping. Some spirit, spiritually sleeping. You don't want to admit it because you're here. You think, I, it's, 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 Jesus had just showed up. He had left. So. And he saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest thou not watch one hour? I'll tell you what, if I walked, if I came here <laughs> at, at, at 6.30 and this place was packed with everybody praying, You'd be getting a new pastor because I'd probably got, give up the ghost right there. God take it. If some of you just showed up on time, I'd be like, look, I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. This world is evil. If you knew what was coming down, there's a storm coming. Remember my text was about builders. Building. The, the storm's coming. How are you building? Couldest thou not watch one hour? He called Peter out. Oh, you're not supposed to do that, Pastor. Why? So just, I am so thankful. I was talking to someone earlier today. I'm so thankful my dad was just dead honest with me. I don't know if he had intuition that he was going to be taken from me. When I was just a teenager, I don't know. I don't know. I give God the credit for it. Life is hard. And he kind of taught me to be tough. I kind of fell into that category, John Wayne. Hey, if you're going to be stupid, you better be tough. Well, I wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer, so I needed to toughen up a little bit. <laughs> Watch ye. He's talking to his disciples. Lest she enter into temptation. Look, if you're not in prayer, you're in temptation. In other words, you've become your own worst enemy. Just because you like it doesn't mean you should fall in love with it. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. It's interesting that Jesus looked at and focused the question on Peter. When you think about it, in just a few hours, Peter was going to face the greatest storm of his life. A storm that would decide the rest of his life. What was Jesus saying? Pray. Pray. Tell your neighbor to pray. Tell the person next to you, pray. You know, you want to, if you didn't see this last Sunday, there was nothing more fantastic and powerful than when Sister Verdell came up and a young, young teenage boy walked up and got lost in prayer for her. Some of you didn't understand it. Some of you had never seen it. Some of you were taken by it. But let me tell you something. If you'll pray, you'll stay. If you'll fast, you'll last. So listen, the multitudes follow Jesus. And this, this, Jesus, you know, retreated into the mountain and he sat down and, and all the followers gathered and he began to teach them. And in and, and, and Matthew chapter 5 through 7, it's what we call the Sermon on the Mount. In this lesson, uh, there were those wonderful messages and, and, and things that we pick up from, uh, like uh, the Beatitudes, the comparison of the Old Testament law with the New Covenant guidelines. See, 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 people like think, well, that's Old Testament. Well, I still believe you shouldn't kill. Yeah. Well, that's the Old Testament. Well, I still believe you shouldn't lie. No, no, no. See, there's a lot of people that think they know the Bible. Yeah. But it, get to know the author and they'll help you. The Lord's Prayer is found there. Are you hearing me? Even the danger of praying, fasting, or giving in order to be seen is talked about there. The passage warning about worrying over temporal things is located there. Ending with, seek ye first the kingdom of God 
We're warned about seeing others' faults when we can't see our own. This is where you'll find the ask, seek, knock passage in Matthew. It says, ask and it shall be given. You seek and you shall find and knock and it shall be opened unto you. There, there, there are other wonderful teachings contained in, contained in this Sermon on the Mount. But what is interesting to me is the Lord's conclusion. And after sharing all these powerful and eternal truths, Jesus wraps up lesson with these words. Therefore, whosoever, he's talking to you. Listen, heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and it beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and it beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Jesus made it very plain that obedience is the key to a life that will stand the test of time. Young people, listen. Don't get caught up in the feelings of your emotions. Don't get caught up in all the things that, trust me, they're not going. But if you will do it the way God called, I promise you, you will stand the test of time and you will be able to bypass a lot of things that your friends and peers are going to go through. Oh, hallelujah. If, you, if I can get an amen from an elder around here, if I, if I can get an amen. Listen, I know we're not as good looking as you anymore and I know we don't have the great hair anymore and I know our bodies are sagging a little bit and going bald and gray and ugly and all that stuff. But let me save you some trouble. God knows how to keep you out of a mess. Oh, if you'll build on this, you'll be faithful to the house of God. You find a, a mate in your life that is living for God. And I'm telling you, real, not these guys that are just showboating and going home and beating on mama or the ladies that come in and showboat that can't be faithful to daddy. I'm talking about bona fide, Holy Ghost filled, on fire, saints up. I'm talking about a church that God can fill. It's important to hear instruction. It's vital. And I think we understand to serve God, we must have faith. Hebrews says that without faith, we cannot please God. So if we understand how vital faith is, then, then this verse is vital too. Romans 10, 17. So then faith coming by, cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Preaching matters. You can't, you can't have church at home. You ain't got a preacher there. Yeah. And anybody who's their own preacher has a lost saint for a congregation. Preaching needs to be the focus of the end time church. Trust me. I don't care how hurt or what you've been through. You start getting upset at the preaching. You just, you just dislodge yourself from being saved. Because preaching open, to open our hearts to the word. Preaching, preaching delves into those, those secret places. The power that is unleashed in our lives comes from the word. First Corinthians tells us, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Listen, it's not from the personality of the preacher, and definitely not from eloquence or the lack of it. It's, it's not how creative sermon illustrations are. It's not found in how loud I can be or how quiet someone can be. Faith comes when the word is preached. But security comes when the word is obeyed and followed. It's not just good enough to hear it. It must be obeyed and followed. Jesus had done a great job of communicating truth in these chapters. But he told those individuals that if they were going to build a spiritual life that lasted, if they were going to be saved, they would have to do what he said. And that little position that you have around here, 
doesn't absolve you from all the other dues that you need to be doing. That ain't enough. You need to hear what I'm saying. Anemic church is a product of anemic saints. Dead church is a product of dead saints. Are you hearing what I, Can I get an amen from some faithful folks? The only thing that, that ensured that their lives would stand, the storms coming, was this. They took those lessons of truth that they heard and applied them into their lives through obedience. Not used to, still do. Not going to, but I do it right now. James tells us in chapter 1, verse 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. The danger of being deceived is you don't know that you are. Oh, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God I get down in prayer and I find that. See, I'm telling you, if you can't get down in prayer tonight and you can't break through to the Holy Ghost, there's a good chance you're already deceived. Oh, I'm not saying you are. I said there's a good chance. Because if God can speak through you, I wonder who's been speaking to you. Oh, well, what are you telling me? That you're putting that on me. No, I'm putting that on you yielding to God. The word deceiving is a troubling word to me. We often think of the deception as being what, what afflicts individuals who don't know truth. It's not about knowing truth. They get confused about truth and wander off the reservation, so to speak, and go into a watered-down church around the corner that makes them feel a little better because it doesn't talk about stuff like this or false doctrine or into gross sin. But James clearly said that an individual can sit right here, hear sermon after sermon, year after year, and be deceived if we become convinced that knowing truth is enough that actually doing it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I can understand that I should forgive. But if I don't forgive, I won't be forgiven. I can know that I should tithe. But if I don't tithe, my finances are cursed. I can know that I should pray. But if I don't pray, I will be powerless spiritually. I can know that I should be faithful. But if I'm not faithful, I will struggle in my walk with God. Again, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a new man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Yes. If we all want to be truly, eternally blessed, we have to be doing more than just showing up. You can just show up to the house and call yourself a wife, but if you don't do the wifely things, you can just show up to the house and call yourself a husband if you ain't doing husband things. You can just show up to your job and sit there, but if you're not doing the job, uh, now, now see, now I got to your, now I got to your priority because you won't keep that job. Yeah, let me tell you why it matters so much. Jesus warned us that storms are coming. Some of you might be in a storm right now. You might be battling for your very soul right now because this message is in your front yard. This message is in your living room because you've been hearing what you ain't been doing for a long time. Come on. Come on, let's be honest. I'd rather get this message today than when it's too late. True. I'd rather be preached this right now than when it's too late. Boy, did you, you know what? I, I, I tell you what, if, if you know I'm about to fail a test tomorrow, slap me, shake me, wake me, give me the air, help me. Don't let me be lost. Uh, someone preach to me. Walk up and shake me and ask me, why are you sleeping? There's a storm coming, Peter. Wake up. He warned every one of us. He told us. Jesus referenced two men and both built a house. We aren't given the floor plans, Jacob. We're not told if the houses were the same size, the same color, or even if they were made out of the same materials. But we, we are told that their foundations varied greatly. 
the man who heard and did the word of God had his house on a rock. This is the only real information we're given. The man who heard but did not do the word of God had his house built on the sand. Jesus made that distinction. That's how Jesus sees those that hear and don't and those that hear and do. Those that do, he sees them on a rock. Those that hear and don't, you're on sand. Now, for a while, they both seem okay. In, good get, in, in the good weather, one serves as well as the other. They both got built, and neither of them toppled over immediately. But then the storm came. The storm showed up. Oh, I know you've heard this before, but there's a presence of God in here, and it's speaking to some people tonight. That storm, that disaster struck. See, Sister Verdell, there are some people that have got the news you got. They'd be home in the field position, crying tears, wanting sympathy from people rather than healing or eternity from God. I get it. I get it. I, I, see, God's having to hear from me too because I've done long, lost one lady that prays for me every day. You ain't about to take the other one from me. <laughs> I don't know about you, and I may not be that important to you, but my God, I'd be thankful if I, had a, I did so much that my pastor didn't want me to go. Come on. You ain't going anywhere yet, pal. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> ah, trust me. I'm praying for you. You ain't going nowhere. It's a sad day. When I make the statement, they look good coming, but they look better when they're leaving. Well, I've had to say that a time or two. Jesus is talking. Disaster. The season of testing arrived to find out how you've been built. You see, 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 because we all look the same right now. We all look good right now. We're all at church. Right. Surely we're all building on a rock right now. Please note that the same words begin both verse 25 regarding the house on the rock and verse 27 regarding the house on the sand. Same words. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and I beat on that house. It's the very same description. It was the very same storm, the same kind of rain, the same kind of flood, and the same kind of wind. Trust me, that moment is going to come. When that temptation arrives, it won't be what you know. <laughs> but it'll be about what you're doing. You can know there's one God, cool. But you better be living it. You can know baptism in Jesus' name. Wonderful. But if you ain't doing it, if you're not really living it, when the storm rages, it won't be what you know, but what you're doing. Because the end of those verses contain a tragic difference. There's a divergence that happens. The house might have been alike. The houses might have been the same. The storms were certainly the same. But the outcomes were what were so different. The house on the rock stood. The rain couldn't damage it. The winds couldn't move it. The floods couldn't destroy it. But the house on the sand. Yeah. And it didn't just fall a little. Great was the fall of it. Great. It was strong. It was kind of strong. It turned around and looked at Not damn. How many of us? Not them. They look so Christian. They looked like they were what? Both had heard the preaching. Both had knowledge of the truth. But the reality was only one was a house that stood. Those that did what they heard. 
It's no wonder that God calls the person who will not obey the word of God foolish. But the one who does obey his word is called wise. This image of the building up of a house based on obedience is a thread throughout scripture. I'm glad to tell you that the plans for this house provide its success. Are you hearing me? First Corinthians tells us, for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2.20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. First Peter chapter 2, 5 to 8, listen to this. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay on Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded unto you therefore which believe he is precious but unto them which be disobedient the stone which the builders disallowed the same is made the head of the corner and the stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed you and I have been given a foundation We've been given an opportunity for a foundation that is unshakable. We've been given a foundation that is unbreakable. We have been given a foundation that's unmovable. Nothing in the world can move it. Hell can't shake it. Nothing that comes my way can weaken it. I can stand through sickness. I can stand through pain. I can make it through rejection. I can stand through financial pressure and final family problem. I, I can make it through emo emotional turmoil. I can stand through spiritual attacks because the foundation under my feet is Jesus Christ and my obedience to his word. I made a commitment. The anchor said, my roots said, I'm going to obey his word. I'm going to stand on his word. I'm going to trust his word. I'm going to hold on to that word. It's not my strength. It's not my wisdom to stand the storm. It's not my idea or my thoughts or who I am to the world. It's my foundation. It's my foundation. It's the foundation. Thank you, Jesus. Obedience to his word is the key to my spiritual survival. Let's all stand. In every house, in every house, there are foundational pillars. There are some key structural elements that connect us to the foundation that hold up the house. I have assurance from God's word that in this life that I'm building on Jesus Christ and obedience to his word, therefore spiritually, the same is true. Remember, it was a wise man who built on the rock. Note what it says in Proverbs 9 and 1. Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. Solomon says there are seven pillars in that house that wisdom builds. So for the next couple of weeks, when I show up here to preach, I'm going to be preaching on these seven pillars. I'm going to be preaching about some seven pillars. Mm -hmm. Unshakable faith. Unwavering commitment. Unfeigned love. Undeniable testimony. Unchanging truth. Unreserved worship. And uninhibited communion. Now, I may not teach them in that order. But we're going to hear about these. I said we're going to hear about these. And if you're wise, you'll do them. Who knows, I may hand some of these off to some of you guys. 
Huh? Because if you'll do that, if you'll be a doer of the word, now, can I, can, can, let, let me not hurt anybody's feelings. It doesn't matter if you're brand new or you've been here as long as I have or not. Nothing absolves us ever in the word of God from being a doer. The only way you're going to be wise is if you're a doer. Not a didder. Hello? You may use, you're going to get your hair did, but this ain't talking about that. Notice I went and got my hair did today. <laughs> Y'all like that? I like, thank you, sis. Erica said it looked good. I don't even know Sister Crow knew I ain't got a haircut. <laughs> She's going to know when I say, I want it all off. Well, I ain't got much left. It's just kind of frustrating me a little bit. I ain't got hair like Isaiah. You know, an old 80s rock star. There was a time. <laughs> Are you hearing me? All kidding aside. It ain't about owning a Bible. It ain't about just showing up. Be a doer. Nobody or nothing can stop you from being a doer. Oh, the devil can't stop you from being a doer. 